got one more minute on the uh, clock, and I personally believe in rewarding the people who showed up on time instead of the people who are late. What do you think? Yeah. Show of hands. It's amazing how that always works. The people always vote for that who are in the room. All right, I have 10 o'clock. My name's Allison Sheridan, and uh, I am the uh, chief podcaster at the No Silicast Mac podcast. You'll see this again at the end, so you can wait to see whether I'm actually interesting, whether you want to write it down after the fact. We'll have it on there. My website is called podfeet.com. I purposely uh, named my podcast so that uh, you can't tell me I'm ever off topic. So I've got this weird name that you can't really quite tell what I'm going to do. So today what I'm going to do is a presentation um, that I will be blindfolded. I'm uh, not blindfolded yet, but I'm going to be blindfolded soon, I promise. In the description, I, I described all these amazingly elaborate things I was going to do on the Mac, and then I started learning how to do it, and it's way, 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 way harder than I thought it would be. So, but uh, not to leave you wanting, I'm actually incorporating the iPhone into this too. So I'm going to demonstrate using the iPhone and the, uh, and the Mac both blindfolded. So I'll be moving between the two. Now, I'm normally I'm a big fan of questions, but this may take the entire 45 minutes. So we'll see how it goes at the end. So one question would be, why am I going to do this blindfolded? I, obviously, I can see, and this is not something that impacts me, but it does impact 1.3 million people are blindfolded in the United States alone. Um, if you add up the visually impaired and, and uh, audio impaired in the world, it's just under the number of people in Facebook. So I think it behooves us all as people who like to produce content and, and enjoy content that how about you get it out to everybody because that's a lot of people you can impact. Um, another thing is 70% uh, unemployment rate in the, uh, in the legally blind. So if they can have accessibility to computers, you, that's got to help, right? I mean, it's not going to hurt. I don't know how much effects it's going to have, but it's got to be better than where we are today. So Apple has integrated what they call voiceover into every single device. I mean, I found it last night, it's in the Apple TV, and I didn't even know that. Uh, it's in the iPod Nano, it's in the Mac, it's in the iPhone. When the iPhone first came out, I said, well, there's no way this is ever going to be accessible. It's a touchscreen for crying out loud. How could it be accessible? But it actually is. So I'm also fascinated by the technology. I just like to learn new things, and I thought, if I signed up to do this tech talk, I would have to learn how to do it. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm doing the talk, was to make myself learn how to do this. It's sort of like learning a new language, too. So it's just kind of stretching my brain, so I thought that was fun. And, and I like the idea of spreading the word a little bit to encourage developers to use the APIs that Apple puts in place for you to use. And not everybody does it, and so it would be a lot cooler if they, if they did. So there's a tutorial when you first turn on VoiceOver that walks you through how to use it. And I, read, I listened to about three quarters of that, but the voice was really slow, so it was really boring, so I moved on. There's a uh, VoiceOver manual that was of some help, but the biggest help was the blind community. I have a bunch of blind friends. I'm not even sure how I collected so many of them, but they're, they, they rock. I mean, these guys help me so much. It's been really, uh, really helpful. About two weeks ago, you can ask my husband, I was convinced I couldn't do it. I was just stuck. I couldn't figure it out. But I wrote to them, and they wrote back, and they gave me all these ideas. And eventually, I got to where I think I can successfully walk through my demo. A lot of practicing, a lot of frustration, a lot of practicing, calling for help, rinse and repeat. So there's two different ways that you operate VoiceOver. On the, on the iOS devices, you turn on VoiceOver in settings. So if you go to settings, uh, general settings, accessibility, you turn VoiceOver on. Um, it reads out loud whatever you touch. So unlike when you're sighted, when you touch it, it opens it. When you touch it, it reads it to you. So in order to open it, you have to double tap it. Well, I'm apparently a big spaz. I can't double tap in the same place twice ever. Can't do it. So one of the blind guys, I think it was Buddy Brandon, uh, told me to use split tap. That's where you touch it with one finger and you tap it with another. So you'll see me do that a little bit. Um, when you type, you touch a letter and the lady tells you what letter you're on. If you stay on that letter, she'll tell it to you in the call sign. So if you're on M and you can't tell that she say M or N, she'll say Mike. You go to N, she says November. When you lift your finger, a different lady says the same letter. So that way you know you touched it and you know you typed it. So you kind of go back and forth between those two. So the way it works on OS X, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of keystrokes to learn. I, uh, it's, it's just astonishing how much you have to learn to use uh, VoiceOver on a Mac because you have no cursor. Everything's done with keystrokes, so you have to learn all these different things. 
And one of the trickiest things, and you'll see me do this and I'll keep repeating it, navigation requires you to interact with the element. So you go to a web page and it'll say, HTML content. <laughs> okay, what's that? We have to interact with it. To do it, you hold down control, option, and shift, down arrow. So you dive down into the content. Then you get to a field that you need to interact with, you have to control, option, shift, down arrow again. You need to get out, you gotta control, option, shift, up arrow. Up and down, up and down, up and down into all of these different things. And by the way, uh, th those are called the voiceover keys, VO, the control option. Then there's a whole another opera all about the, the rotor, as they call it, and, and I, I'm not good at that at all. And I, I may show it to you at the end if for some miracle we actually have time. This is six out of 15 of the voiceover commands help. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. These are all like, you know, control, option, shift, Y, and I think you have to swing a dead cat around your head on that one, you know? It's, it's insanity. I know like maybe eight, so don't ask me to step out of the box because it's, it's like a landmine out there. Okay, here we go. I'm going in. I'm terrified, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the iPhone, and there isn't a real good way to capture the iPhone on screen. So if you want to play along with the home game, you might want to just consider closing your eyes. Uh, you can keep them open if you want. I'm not going to know. Um, so I'm going to turn on voiceover now, and, the, and I have a setting turned on called triple click home, which allows me to toggle it on and off very easily. So I'm going to hit the home button three times, and you hear her come on. Voice on. Okay, so now I'm going to start moving my finger on screen. Oh. And that is the one thing. 11, 11 O's, 3 and 3 bars. Wi Fi signals, 11. Third. Macaroni World, Macaroni World, Rays of P. Check in at TT 916, Appaloosa, top 25 iPad 2 apps for social media. I love that I'm using an overhead projector to show iPad. <laughs> No jailbreaking here. <laughs> what did, you, did something on screen? I don't know what it is, right? Eleven oh three and three bars. Why not eleven oh six? Okay, I'm actually going to have to start this over because I don't know where I am. Katie, where am I? <laughs> Why? Oh, the crony world. The crony world. Rain okay. Rain. It's the worst possible scenario. Okay, now I'm going to start the demo. Okay, just cut that out of the tape, okay, guys? Okay, the unexpected consequence. I don't know what to do with that. Okay, so now, pretend I'm just starting right now. Oops. So I'm going to... Calendar. Three messages. One new item. So as I move across the screen, it's reading to me where I am. So that was messages. There's photos. Contacts. So I can touch different Which things and find them. I'm going to go back to items. messages. Five and five bars. Messages. One new item. So now I'm going to do that split tap I talked about. And messages. Diana Tom Salter. I'm Bluetooth on. Okay. Diana Tom Salter. I'm, I'm Jen. Funny message. January 20th. I'm message. Three and three bars. One messages. Back button. Okay. Diana messages. Back I was accidentally in a message. I had a fear that people would message me to say, good luck. <laughs> uh, and apparently they did. So now I think I'm on the main screen. So I'm going to go to the upper right and try to find the compose button. button. Contact button. I message. Jen, what a message. I'm edit button. Send. Okay, maybe I'm not always Messages. Back. Edit. Compose button. There we go. Found it. Okay, I'm going to split tap again. So now it should say I'm going to start to do a message. New message. Got it. Okay. Two. Two. Text field. Is editing. So did you notice she said is editing? That's really important. So that tells me I can start typing a text message. So I'm going to uh, invite Katie for to go out to dinner with me tomorrow night. So here we go. I'm going to type her Google address. So I'm going to type G-O-O-G. T. Message. T. T. Tango. F. G. There we go. Now when I lift it, she'll say a different a different voice will say the letter. G. I. O. 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 G. Y. G. G. 
Did you hear the difference between the two voices? Okay, so I'm going to drag my finger down. She should be up on screen by now. Two. Katie, Google Voice, mobile. There we go. I'm going to split tap. There, I just selected her. So now, you know, the uh, about halfway down is the place to enter the message. I'm going to put my finger down there and try to find that. R. Text message. Text field. But you know, she didn't say is editing, so I need to split tap again. Text message. Text field. Is editing. There we go. Okay. Now, i got to warn you guys, this is going to go really fast. I type almost six words a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Capital R. Oh. Indian. Cap, 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 capital D. Capital C. Capital C. C. Nope. Shift. More. Capital C. 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 Capital do H Y Y O O U U space space U W W A A N N T T space space G G O O space space T T O O space space Two D F Fuck D D I I N N N N E E R R Okay, here we go. Here's the hard one. I gotta find this question mark which is on a different keyboard. More numbers. Semicolon, comma, question mark. Question mark. Send. Okay, now I gotta find the send button and when I'm successful it'll say send dimmed. Send button. Send there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the uh, of the iPhone part. So I'm gonna unplug your watch your ears because it's gonna crack me. Numbers. Okay, you be quiet. I think I'll turn her off. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the uh, to the Mac. That was the easy part, guys. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you can see on screen, it should be the blue background, right? Okay, so one thing to know is that nothing I'm doing here was an add-on. I didn't purchase anything. There's, there's, this is all right out of the box from Apple. If you use Windows, it costs about $900 to buy a product called JAWS to do much of the same thing. So it's really, I mean, Macs are expensive, um, don't get me wrong, but for the blind, this is actually a pretty good alternative. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on voiceover, so I'm going to hit Command F5, and I have to count to find the F5 escape. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Welcome to voiceover. Voiceover sees descriptions of items on the screen and can be used to control the computer using only your keyboard. Okay. Speech on. So this is Victoria, and she's going to be talking to us throughout this. So um, I'm going to try to talk through each of the keystrokes as I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to launch Safari, and I'm going to try to find us an Italian restaurant to have dinner. So I'm going to hit Command Space and launch um, Spotlight to get into Safari. No, I'm going to forget and hit the wrong key. OK, that's not good. Oh, it did? Yes. Oh, I had it on before I started. Thank you. <laughs> Escape. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. You know what? VoiceOver's been weird on this, and I may have a big problem here. Somebody tell me what's on screen right now. Safari's up. Safari's up. Okay, we've got a failure. This happened once this morning. Um, VoiceOver. Okay, and now it says it's off. One, two, three, four, five. Welcome to VoiceOver. Okay. VoiceOver speaks description of items on. VoiceOver on. Speech off. Speech off. Oh. VoiceOver on. There we go. Huh? And I did 
couldn't take the blindfold off. I did have some assistance from my friends. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, use Command L to get to the uh, URL bar, which is um, I use as a site link, so I figure that's that's fair. That is what my blind friends call me. Uh, one of them called me, uh, what did he say? He said I was photon dependent. <laughs> but that was very clever. All right, so I'm going to go Command L, and I'm going to um, go into Yelp. No, I'm not. So there's a, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat right now. I'm going to get me out of this altogether. One of the things I practiced was recovery from failure. So um, I'm going to hold down Control Option M. And I'm going to turn on private browsing that's going to erase everything and let me start over. There we go. Private browsing. There we go. Now here's where we were supposed to start. <laughs> so starting over. Uh, command space to get to uh, uh, spotlight. Okay, so now I know where I am. That, that makes me really happy that I can do that. So I'm going to hit Command L and type in Yelp. Open location. Yelp selection deleted. Period. HTML content. Okay, so with any luck, I think I'm at Yelp. Nope. You are currently at HTML content. Oh, Christ. Where am I? <laughs> ah. That is something I didn't contend with before. You guys are being so nice to me. <laughs> okay, so that's the that's the word she says when I'm in the right search window. So I'm going to start by actually I need to make sure a feature is turned off called Quick Nav. I'll explain what Quick Nav is in just a minute. Quick Nav off. Okay, I got to make sure that's off because things get real weird if I forget to turn it off. Okay, so I'm going to type in Italian restaurant. And for some reason, she doesn't read that to me. So I'm going to flip to the right and back. And I'm going to do that by holding down Control Option, right arrow, and then left arrow. Near Italian restaurant in Central Island, Good. So I'm going to go to the right. Near address, city, street, San Jose, Okay. I want to be in San Jose. I want to be in San Francisco. By the way, I'm, I'm shutting her voice off by hitting the control key every time. So if you hear her cut off, that's why. Selection to me, San Francisco. Okay, I'm just going to hit enter. And now I need to turn Quick Nav back on. So the, the purpose of Quick Nav is to allow me to navigate to headings. If any of you guys have done any work with uh, in HTML, headings are just little tags you put in. And I used on my own website, I would have all these different sections and I would just make the section titles bold. One of the blind guys said, you know, we would be able to hop from section to section if you would just make them heading tags instead. So if we have time, I'll show you a bad website uh, that where headings aren't used and what a nightmare it is. But I'm gonna show you on Yelp that it actually works. So I'm gonna start hitting the H key to jump from heading to heading. Did I turn it on? Quit now. There we go. Okay, so H. Heading level one to Williams. Italian restaurant. Heading level three. Sword play. Heading level three. Neighborhoods. So I'm going to keep jumping. Sorry about the mic. I'm going to keep jumping. I can't see it. I don't know where it is. Um, I'm going to keep using the H. I'm going to keep using the H to jump from heading to heading. Heading level three. Distance. Heading level three. Features. Heading level three. Points. Heading level three. Category. Heading level four. Link. One. One yard. Ah, there's an Italian restaurant called La Traviata, and I think that's a good one. So to, to now, I want to stay in that little section, so I'm going to hold down Control Option and Right Arrow over until I can find uh, some information about La Traviata. Category, link, Italian, neighborhood, link, mission. Oh, okay, mission district. Katie, that's okay. Mission's close enough, right? Ooh, four stars. I hope that's out of five, not ten. <laughs> 250 people, that's good. Okay, the next step is very tricky. Listen very, very closely. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it after I do it because I have to do it really quickly. Two, five, four, Mitchell, San Francisco. Mouse plays copy to the paste board. 
Okay, this was one of the biggest things that got stuck on is how do you copy text that you can't see? And one of the guys told me, one of the guys told me that if I hold down Control Option Shift C right after she talks, it copies the last thing that she said. So what I just did was copied it, and I needed to copy it quickly because she starts saying other stuff. So that that's the tricky bit. So now you know how to copy text. So I've copied it. So we're gonna we're gonna quit Safari now. Okay, so now I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go back to quick or to um, spotlight, and I'm gonna bring up and I'm gonna bring up iCal. No, I'm not. Apparently, I'm not in the finder. I'm in the presentation. I thought I quit the presentation. Caps lock on. I'm trying to quit. Okay, I'm stuck again. Uh, so am I in the presentation right now? Yes. Am I in, oh, maybe, there we go. You guys are being so nice, thank you. <laughs> this is six weeks of practicing to get this good. Okay, let's see if I can get to Quicksilver, or to uh, Spotlight again. No, still not in the finder. Let me try the dock again. 
from there. So I can keep talking and talking. Hmm. What if I delete it? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to take my blindfold back off. Yeah. Did it kill it? No. Okay. Blindfolded. So I can keep talking and talking. Now we quick look around. Right Page one. Now we just talk. Blindfolded. So I can keep talking and I didn't practice this. All right, I've got, I've got to give up for a second to figure out how to get out of this. You are going to keep blindfolded. <laughs> so I can keep talking. Why so wrong? Could you also have the spotlight? Is there a key command? Get out of spotlight? Or no, to go to spotlight and then you could have done a search for high count. But I can't I can't get spotlight out. Desktop. Cast voice of room. Okay. I'm just gonna open something else up so it stops looking at that. See if that works. Let's try this again. All right. Okay. All right, but I don't have voiceover on. Uh, let's see. Function uh, let's see, command. One, two, F3, F4, F5. No. Okay, escape. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Oh, come on. Crying out loud. And then voiceover. System preferences. Welcome to voiceover. Okay. Voiceover home. Finder. Oh, my friends. Random. List view table. Cancel. Now we quick look random. Yay! Oh, Oh no, quick look again? <laughs> oh come on, you're crying out loud. I do not know. Oh my friends, A's. What's the roof? This is not as smooth as I thought, guys. No. We'll start there. Imagine that whole part was cut. <laughs> okay. So, do I have voiceover on? Oh, does it look like I'm peeking? <laughs> well, you know I would take it off and tell you now. Okay. Uh, one, F2, F3, F4, F5. Okay. Okay. This is not what I wanted. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Okay, so I can see that there's there's five rows and seven columns. That means I'm in the month view. And now imagine all that other stuff didn't happen. And I have no idea whether we've still got that address in the clipboard at this point, but we'll find out. So I'm going to hit Command N for a, uh, a new, um, uh, new meeting event. So when I do that, there's going to be a really creepy voice. I want to warn you, she's really scary. I don't know why it's that creepy voice. But so now at this point, I'm going to say, uh, I can type in. I can type in very natural language at this point. So I'm going to say dinner. Ah, quick nap is still on. Quick nap off. There we go. Yeah, you're in the eye. January 2001. And try it again. Seven columns. Yeah, you're in the eye. Two columns. No event. I don't know what's going on, guys. Quick nap on. No event. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is it in caps? Mm -hmm. Caps on caps. There we go. Oh. Dinner, Dinner with, with Katie. Katie at 6, 6 p.m. Tonight. Dinner with Katie tonight. Content selected. Dial. Edit text. Okay, good. So we're in. And now I'm going to hit um, control option down arrow. Event details. Scroll down arrow. So she says scroll area, and I don't know why she says that, but this is one of those elements that I explained at the beginning we have to, we have to dive down in to interact with it. So I'm going to put a hold down control, option, shift, down arrow to interact with it. There we go. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to start flipping through these elements with control, option, right arrow. Okay, good. So I want to put in La Traviata. 
Now let's find out whether the uh, address is still there. It might not be with all the turning on and off of voiceover. You want space? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> you guys are so nice. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna uh, keep navigating through with Control Option right arrow. All day, all day, on Jack channels. Good. I don't want dinner all day. <laughs> Good. So got the time right. January 26th, 7 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. Well, if you know Katie and I, we can't eat dinner in one hour because all the yapping. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna now I have to I have to interact with this. So remember I said you have to keep diving down layers and then up layers. I'm gonna hit Control Option Shift Down Arrow to interact with this. Interact with date and time 2012. Okay, 2012 is right. January. Good. May 26. Good. 7 p.m. Okay, now I'm gonna just hit Control Option Up Arrow to go to 7 o'clock or to 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. Good. Now I have to stop interacting with that. So I have to do control option shift up arrow to jump back out of that. There we go. Okay. Okay. There's no alert, but I want to, I want to do an alert. So it's, she said pop up button. And buttons you don't interact with, you spacebar on them. So you do control option spacebar. Okay, and I'm going to do control option down arrow to, to change it to an alert or a message. There we go. Now to select that again, control option space because it's a button. Okay. Now for some reason, when I do that one, it takes me back to the top again. So I got to go all the way back down through everything. I don't know why it does that. I think that's a bug. Okay, I don't want a second message. Okay, now I got to go to the right. Oh, actually, no, that was actually the add invitees button. So I'm going to hit control option. I'm going to hit control option space because she said button. It's that creepy lady voice again. Now if I can find the keys again. So now I'm going to type in Katie's uh, email address. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop interacting with this because I want to get down to the send button. And since it's a button, control option space bar. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little rough, but uh, you get the idea of exactly how hard this is. You, you get a little feel for how much, I mean, that's six weeks of practicing daily for me to be that bad at it. Um, let me go through, how's my time? I am. I'm photon dependent. Somebody did point that out was, was if you can look at the screen, I mean, I did a lot of looking at the screen to figure out what it was doing, and so, uh, sorry, my contact lens gets weird when I've had the blindfold on. Um, I did do a lot of cheating going, what's it doing? What's it doing? Finally, one of the blind guys explained to me that if you hold down um, control option, and, or no, if you triple click with three fingers, it turns the screen black so you can stop cheating. And I did do that eventually, but it took me a long time to get to that. The main reason he told me was he was afraid, what if you ever accidentally did that? You go, I just broke my computer, how do I get back out? So what I learned was that iOS is much, much easier than I thought. It was pretty easy to get the hang of doing that. Uh, navigation was easy. I even started testing applications. Like there's an application called MacHash that just came out. It's a news aggregator of, Mac, of all the different Mac news sites. And I thought, well, let me see if that's accessible. And I knew how to test it now, and that made me really happy, because often I get these things, I'm like, I don't know, is it, the guys will ask me, is it accessible? Is it, well, how would I tell? I, it's what it looks like. So uh, MacHash, by the way, worked immediately. So I, I wrote to the developer and I said, hey, it's really cool you did the accessibility stuff. And he said, I did? So that shows you it's easy to do right. He says, well, I just did what they told me to do. I followed the APIs, I did what they suggested. So you really, you really can do it well. Um, like I said, uh, I got up to that blazing speed of six words a minute. I'm sure no one was bored during that part. And, uh, but what I found out that was fascinating to me was that I, I'm a touch typist, and my fingers don't actually know where the, I, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't know where the keys are. My fingers know where the keys are. So this finger right here, it knows where L is. My thumb, 
No idea. It's all over the screen trying to figure out. So I had to retrain my brain to know where the letters were. And I got pretty good at it. I can do it pretty well now. But it was, it was just real interesting to me that the way your brain is wired that, that I didn't know that. As you can tell, OS X is much, much harder. There's so many moving parts, so many variables, hundreds of keystrokes. I'm sure the blind guys could have gotten out of that slightly more gracefully than I did and wouldn't need a crowd of 50 people to, to uh, you know, do it for them. Um, you are definitely dependent on the, uh, on the web designer, so uh, it looks like we are going to have time. I want to show you what uh, Urban Spoon looks like to a blind person, and you can see how bad it is when it's done badly. Um, and for the, I mean, for the love of Pete, use headings. So more on the lessons learned, um, the application developers are important too, not just the website developers. For example, Firefox is completely inaccessible. Nothing. It's, it's just blank. It, it has no information at all. And I had Mitchell Baker, the, uh, the head of the Mozilla Foundation, on my podcast, and she said, look, we're an all-volunteer operation and nobody's written it. But they chose a development path that allows them to make it cross-platform more easily, and that kept them from using the Apple API. So they did it wrong in my book. Um, you know, Apple has done so much, but it really is, it has a long way to go, and the developers are a big per part of it. One interesting benefit, I've been having trouble that my cursor's been disappearing, but all I do is I turn on voiceover, I mute it, and I can navigate around and get myself restarted because I know how to do it without a cursor now. So that was kind of nice. One of the biggest things I learned is that the blind community rocks. I'd like to call them out by name. Buddy Brannon, Slough, Daryl Shandro, Dan Eckmeyer, Donald Breda, Keith Watson, Joshua Lea, Kevin Chow, Scott Howell, James Austin, Bill Holton, and Laura Schindler, who isn't actually blind, but she teaches blind children. Very, very encouraging me to get this done. So you can see I had a vast staff behind me to get as far as I did. And I'd like to give extra special thanks to Katie Floyd, for receiving hundreds of practice text messages and hundreds of meeting invites. And she kept saying, I want to go to dinner already. <laughs> and to Steve Sheridan for listening to endless repetitions of me typing on iOS and on uh, voiceover on the Mac, because they had to uh, really, they put up with a lot. Here's my contact information if you want to, uh, uh, my email is allison at podfeet.com, my website's podfeet.com, my logo's podfeet, my, you, get the, you get the hint of what that is. So let me um, successfully quit that. How did I get in mail? When did that happen? <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I sure hope uh, I didn't reveal anybody's addresses. Okay, so let's turn on, on voiceover again. And I'm going to do this one sighted because it's so miserable. So I'm going to go to uh, Urban Spoon. Okay. Okay, so in order to get to the San Francisco Bay Area, you can see it in the yellow bar down there. Watch what I have to do. I'm doing control, option, right arrow. I can't type Italian restaurant in San Francisco. It goes, what? I don't know what you're talking about. So I have to go through this. Ah, there we go. Okay. So now I can go over to the search field. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh, sorry. Italian. Spell that right. Okay. Now let's put let's put quick nav on it and touch that that handy little H key and see what happens. Good. There's nothing. So watch this. So do you see why I say for the love of Pete use headings? Please, please use headings. So um, let me also show you. I didn't give you the uh, the eye chart there of the uh, of the of menus of the of the help, but let me show it to you. So I go to general. Fifty four items. That's just general, you guys. I'm only on the first one. There's only eight in that one. So it's insane what you can, uh, what you have to learn to do this successfully. So, um, oh. note to self: don't put anything on the desktop. <laughs> your reference. It's the first time I did that. Never change things right before your demo. So we actually do have time for questions. I did kind of blaze through that. Um, yeah, can you go to the mic? That way, the the house sound will pick up your question as well. I hope so.
All right, trying to hollering, I suppose. All right, so your mind community that you worked with, the ones that used JAWS for their screen reader, did they have an easier time transitioning to voiceover on the Mac? Actually, uh, so I'm going to repeat the question just in case. My friends that used JAWS, uh, was it easier to transition to voiceover? That was one thing that was really helpful, and I wish I could remember who was who. Um, one of the guys said he would be the most help to me because he was in the process of learning it, so he remembered what was already hard and what, what to get his arms around. But he said it was actually pretty difficult. So I think it's like learning maybe French and Italian. They're, they're, you know, they're both romance languages, but you know, they conjugate verbs differently kind of thing. So it's the same sort of beast, but it was, uh, it, was, it was still hard for him. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to tell you. All the blind guys, they're a bunch of liars. <laughs> they told me it was easy. They encouraged me, said, oh, it was a piece of cake. My friend Slough said, uh, he said, you know, uh, it's, it's so easy, Allison. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pick this up quite easily. And a week ago, he left me a voicemail that I'm going to play for you. If I can find it. I think I saved it. Oh, let's see. Voicemails. There it is. Here we go. I'll just play you the very beginning. You are so ready to try and navigate Safari with voiceover. <laughs> See? See, that was the same guy who said, it's easy, it's a piece of cake. So anyway, I just wanted to call Slough out in particular on that. But uh, I am glad they didn't tell me how hard it was because I don't think I would have ever gone down this journey. Any other questions? Yeah, Katie. What, um the blind community seems to be thrilled that Apple has built the support into their native apps. Right. What can third party developers do? I mean, we saw how easy it was, easy it was for you to create an iCal event. Can third party apps like Fantastical or some of these Busy calendaring cal apps? Well, no, but I was thinking specifically some of these calendaring apps that will, you know, automatically create text or launch bar that will allow you to create an event you know, directly from... I think, I mean, the, well, the, the APIs are out there, so yeah, I mean, what, what's funny is we get in our heads of, oh, the blind people wouldn't want that. They do. They want to be able to do everything we can do, so there really isn't any kind of app that they don't want to use. Um, the, and their use is often very different, like I, Slough is a, um, owns a music recording studio in New York and runs it himself, and uh, he thinks it's hysterical that I don't know how he edits audio without being able to see. You know, because you got, you know, you got dead spots, you can just grab them, cut them, that kind of thing. You know, you can recognize what a belch looks like in the audio. You know, how do you do that? I mean, and he thinks it's hysterical that I need to be able to see to edit audio. So they definitely look at different things. Yeah, Ron. Would Siri or Siri-like technology really be the next step? And this, to be able to say, obviously we've done the calendar things, you know, enter in the state, but to be able to ask it other questions, including opening apps, uh, on the computer, it seems like that would really be the next step. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Siri is an obvious extension that should be able to help them. Um, by the way, that was another thing. They, they all told me, oh, Allison, we don't type on the iPhone. They said, we use Bluetooth keyboards. But I really wanted to show what was built in, you know, so that I didn't have any extra help. And I actually don't have an iPhone 4S, so I don't have Siri. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing, looking at Siri on the Mac to just go, hey, would you open up iCal for me and put in a calendar invite to Katie? Right. That would have been a lot easier than what I had to do. So yeah, I think I, I would love to see Siri on here, you know, working well, and all the voice recognition bugs worked out and everything. But uh, yeah, I think that would be fantastic. Oh, one other question. Oh, and, and let's take Connor first, and we'll come back. Yeah. So do you know how well VoiceOver works with other localizations? Like, is it just as useful if you're reading like simplified Chinese, or is it Ooh. pretty English centric? So the question was, uh, what about other localizations? Is it only English? I have no idea, but I would be willing to bet they thought of that. Um, I don't actually know. Perhaps when uh, some of my blind friends see this, they'll pass the word to other countries and ask them how that works. Uh, yeah. Um, Allison, uh, I, I hope you know something about this. I don't mean to be making a stab in the dark. Uh, I'm, I'm a teacher, so I'm interested in what already exists. Not in reinventing fire, are there screencasts, are there uh, podcasts and stuff that help people ramp up on voiceover? Are there, yeah, so are there podcasts and screencasts on ramping up on voiceover? I did do a search for videos online and I found a few things, like you saw I reset Safari. 
uh, the control option M getting me to the menu. I found that out through a video, but they actually weren't very good, most of them. I had a lot of trouble finding those. Um, there are some podcasts. There's uh, One of my favorites is called The Blind Access Journal. It's done by Dr. Robert Carter, and he's done a fantastic job. He had a partner on once where he had a, he had a, uh, a Mac, and, he, and she had a PC, and they described what it looked like to them. And that was fascinating. What's the, what's the layout? Just describing it from the beginning. Um, he also did one where she had an iPad and he had an iPhone. The title of that episode was Does Size Matter? And that one was really cool too because they were describing, they were afraid that when the, you got to an iPad, maybe it's just too big. You've got too much empty space to, to navigate. But the way the apps work with the scrolling side panes and stuff actually showed that it actually worked really well. Um, that isn't specifically your question, but um, there's another one that just started, uh, it's called Triple Click Home, and I, I think Buddy Brandon is on that one. A couple of people are working on that, and uh, it might be something to request to say, hey, who's, who can teach it? But yeah, contact me later, and uh, Mary, and we can, uh, to, uh, I bet I could get some excitement for that. Okay, now back to you. Oh, I was going to ask the same thing. Oh, you were? Resources for people that want, for blind people that need to learn it, so are they on their own? Or what? Yeah, I don't know. I know. JAWS you can learn through the Braille Institute, um, but I don't know whether they uh, started doing voiceover in the Braille Institute or not. I would, if I were blind, I would start at the Braille Institute because it's an amazing resource that's you know free to them. So and, and, uh, and just like uh, four-year-old sighted kids that want to mess with iPads, uh, there's got to be somebody out there, right? Uh, yes. is it starting now or maybe yesterday to help kids. Yeah. Start ramping up with it. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. They also have uh, braille displays. They look like a they look like a keyboard. It's a bunch of little chiclet keys that have the little bumpy things go up and down, and they plug them into USB, and they can read so that they're not having to listen and you know disturb everybody around them. Um, there's actually a guy who reads my blog who is deaf blind, can't see, can't hear, and he wrote to me. And he said, Hey, you know your blog's awesome. I love reading it on my Mac Mini with my braille display. As I always say, I will consider, continue writing that blog forever for that guy. I mean, how cool is that? So, All right, it looks like we're out of time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much for coming and being patient. patient.